Hello and welcome back to another awesome video here at Pragmatic Works. Today we're going to be taking a look at how to create dynamic data sets that are reusable by leveraging parameters. If that sounds good to you, then stay tuned. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to pick right back up where we have were in the last video in this series. If you remember, in the last video, we were taking a look at the for each activity and we were calling a stored procedure and we were taking information and we were writing that information to our database. But there was one small problem, right? The problem was, and I'm gonna go ahead and dive right into the demo here. The problem was that the get metadata activity was returning a list of all of the child items from my data lake. That part is great. In fact, if I were to run this again, which I should have went ahead and done, but I'm going to do it now, we'll be able to look at what's being actually returned from the get metadata activity. And then the for each activity is going to loop over that array. It's going to loop over all of those items, processing the first row and then the next row and then the next row. So I have a stored procedure inside the for each activity that writes that information to my database table. Now, all of that is review, right? We've taken a look at this in the last two videos. So if this seems like it's moving too fast for you, go back and watch those videos first. This video is not to redesign or to repurpose that process, but to build on it. So if I look at the get metadata activity here and we look at the data, what you're going to see is that within the child items, the only information that the metadata activity is giving me when I do child items is the name and the type. But I want to find out when was that file last modified? That's what I want to find out. And that's what we're going to do in this video with parameters and by adding some more capability within our for each activity, right? So let me go ahead and close this out, remove my breakpoint, and then I'm going to go into the for each activity here. And when I click on the for each activity right now, we have a stored procedure, right? Again, this is nothing but review inside of the settings for that. I've configured it so that we take the name that is currently being looked at by the for each activity and we write that to our database table. And then we take the modified date and the record insert date. And this is the problem that we're going to solve. We were just giving it the current date and time because we don't know the actual last modified date of the file that requires some extra work, which is the entire premise behind this video that we're now going to do. So what I want to do, let's kind of talk through the, the process and then, 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 then figure it out and set it up is I want to add a get metadata activity here, right? Inside the for each activity. Now what the for each activity is doing is it's going to look at that list of files and there's about 10 or 11 internet sales files that are in that folder. And it's going to grab the first file and it's going to do whatever the activities are that we define within the for each activity. It's going to perform each one of those activities, right? So what I want to do is I want the get metadata activity to take the first file that is being iterated over and return information about that file. Return the last modified type, return the size of the file, return all of those crucial details that we want. However, in order to do that, we need to create a data set that is dynamic, a data set that allows us to pass in one file name on one iteration of the loop and then pass in a different file name on the next iteration of the loop, right? That's what we want to do. And that's what we're going to do in this video. So we're going to come back to this, but first we need to create a dynamic data set. So the first thing I'll do is just click new right here. You could also go to data. And of course, from the data hub, we could create new integration data sets, but I can create it right here. And it's really the same thing. So I'll go ahead and call this one. This is going to be connecting to my data lake, right? So we'll connect my data lake gen two. I believe that they're all CSV files. So we'll do delimited text. And then I need to give this a name. And so what I'll name it real quick here is Azure ADLS. I don't remember the name of my storage account, so we'll just do something very generic. And then I'm going to call this dynamic. And I'm giving it a name of dynamic on the end, just so I know it's a dynamic data set that's really going to work for the entirety of my data lake. Depends on the route. You'll see that in a minute, but that's going to be pretty cool. So I'm going to do that. Then I'm going to choose my link service and I'm going to go ahead and choose the default storage account that was created. And then what I want to do is I want to point to 
maybe one of the files that are in that folder location. So I'm going to do that. I'll go to training. I'll go ahead and go to my internet cells. So again, these are the, the, the things that we've worked with in a previous video. And I'm going to grab this file right here. Internet cell, doesn't matter which one I grab because I'm going to get rid of that in a minute because we're going to parameterize this and make it more dynamic. Down here at the very bottom, you can't see it on my screen, but I'm going to go ahead and click OK to close that out. I'm going to tell it that I do... I don't care about importing the schema and since it's a dynamic data set that I might use for other purposes, for other files that are of different types, I'm actually going to not import the schema. I do want to do first row as header because I know that most of the time my data is going to be in the first row, my column headers. And then again, I'm going to go down to the very bottom and click OK. Now, up until this point, this is a regular data set. It's a, it's a static data set that's created for a very specific purpose. But if you create every data set like this, then you're going to have uh, a lot of bloat, right? You're going to have a lot of extra data sets that are just um, consuming your workspace and taking up a lot of space and requiring a lot of management effort. That's why making these dynamic is so important. So here we go. We've created that new data set. I'm going to click open so we can take a look at it. And what I want to do is I want to make it so that the file name right here, the file name can be replaced. Right? So imagine that we're back inside the for each activity. Every time the for each activity runs, if it's pointing to this data set, it's always going to grab the same file, which is not correct. That's not what I want. So I want to replace this hard coded value with a parameter. A parameter is a placeholder that can change, right? The value of that can change. So in the data set right here under parameters, right? You see that under parameters, I'm going to tell it that I want to click and create a new parameter. And we'll call this one item name. I'll call it file name. So we'll go with file name. I'll give it a default value of placeholder. I always personally do placeholder because what placeholder does is it'll help your code to compile and validate when you go to publish it because there's times where it will actually fail if you're using it and you don't give it a value. But I know that I don't really ever have a file called placeholder. So if I forget to map the value to this, it'll fail at runtime, which is a clear indication to me that I need to go back and map it. So with that being done, we need to go back to connection. That was easy. We got to go back to connection. And now I have to tell it that whatever value gets passed into that parameter from the pipeline. So the pipeline is going to pass a value into that parameter. Whatever value gets passed in, replace it right here. So I'm going to click on that, go into add dynamic content. And then I'm going to say, look at what it's doing here. What I want to do is I want the value of the file name to come from this parameter which right now is placeholder, right? So if I were to run it, it would fail. If I tried to preview the data, it would fail because placeholder has no valid, it's not a valid file, right? So we'll click OK at the bottom and that's it. We just made this dynamic, right? Pretty easy to do. Now, whenever you call this data set from any pipeline, from any activity, you're going to be prompted. You will be prompted to give that parameter some kind of value. You can choose to hard code and just type it in not necessarily ideal situation, but you could, or you could choose to do something more dynamic. So for example, if it's inside the for each loop, every iteration of the loop, I'm going to pass in the item.name. So every iteration of the loop, the name changes, the data set changes, and it gets me information about a different file. That's what we're trying to do here. So now with this part being done, we can go back over to the for each activity and we can wrap things up. Now, I've already brought, and again, this is all building off of my last couple videos. So if you haven't seen this series, you probably should start from the very first video and kind of go through the entire thing, but at least go back a couple videos. So if you're kind of, hey, Mitchell, this is moving too fast again, you'll be caught up with everything that we're doing. But to get metadata activity, I'm going to now change it. Oh, look at that. It's already updated automatically. Interesting. And it's grabbing that dynamic data set that I already chose. So now it says, hey, I notice, and this is what I was telling you, the data set, anytime you call it, is going to prompt you and tell you, hey, this data set has a parameter. Do you want to give it a different value? So for example, I could type in here, internet sales .csv. Now, of course, that would be a hard coded value. And every single time this iteration runs, it's going to always go look for that file. So that's not what I want to do. What I want to do instead is I want to say add dynamic content. And I'm going to tell it, okay, from the current item that the for each activity is iterating over, I want you to grab the name property, right? Whatever the value is in that name, 
Use that for the file name that you're getting information about. That's it. This is all we got to do. So now I can click OK. And there's a couple things we need to do to wrap this up. So we're not quite done, right? Why are we doing the get metadata activity? Well, we're doing it to go get the last modified date of the file, right? So I go down to field list at the bottom. We talked about get metadata multiple times in this series. And from the drop down there, I am going to grab last modified, right? So that is going to return a last modified property from the get metadata to activity. All right. So now there's one more thing we have to update. In the stored procedure right here, remember what I was doing before is I was kind of giving the modified date. We were kind of cheating a little bit because we knew we couldn't get the last modified date and we were using UTC now, right? Well, what I'm going to do is delete that and I'm going to say, hey, give me the actual last modified date of the file. So I can come over here and say I want to do activity outputs because the get metadata to is going to have an output, right? We've talked about outputs before. And the one that we want to do is going to be the get metadata last modified property. All right. And so that's going to be right here. Get metadata. Oh, that's the wrong one, isn't it? That's supposed to be modified too. Let me get rid of that. Let's see if we can find the right one here. There we go. I'm trying to make sure my head's not blocking you. There you go. So we're going to grab that one because remember the one and this would you know, as a best practice, I'm kind of trying to get through the video in a quick amount of time. So I didn't rename everything, but I should have named this more appropriate get last modified date. So we would know not just get meta metadata two, but that's what I need right there. So that's going to say, hey, from that get metadata activity that's inside the for each activity, get the output, get the last modified property, which every iteration of the loop, it's going to take the new file name. It's going to go look at the new file name and it's going to look at the last modified date of that new file, right? So it's very dynamic, very reusable. And of course, what we're doing here can be reused in other places as well. So I'm going to click OK again. Now, that was a lot. Good thing about YouTube videos, you can pause, you can rewind, you can slow it down, do whatever works best for you. But if I come back over here, you'll notice that this is the table that we were doing in our last video. And I'm going to go ahead and truncate this table. So I'm going to say truncate. Uh, let me go ahead and steal the name of the table here. Right. Which means I'm just going to wipe the table clean. I'm going to wipe it clean. And if I query the table again, there's going to be no data in this table. All right. So now for the moment of truth, we're going to jump back over to ASA and we're going to run our pipeline. We're going to run our pipeline. Now, remember, this is what it's going to do. The first get metadata activity, as we saw a moment ago, is going to go and get a list of all of the files that are in that folder. The for each activity is going to iterate over each file in that folder. And on the first file, it's going to get the last modified date and it's going to write that information to my table. Go to the next file, get the name, get the date, write that information to my file. And it's going to do that for every file that's in there. And I think there's about 10 or 11 files that are in that directory location. So. I'm going to come up to the very top here and click debug. And we're going to let this run. It should run pretty quickly here. And uh, in just a few moments, we will see the results of that test. There we go. Go ahead and refresh our results. All right, and it looks like it's probably on the last one here. So we'll refresh it again and it is done. So everything has run successfully. Everything has completed. If we go back over and, and the cool thing about this is you can always look at the output. So we'll take a look at that in just a second. But if we go back over here and we run our code, we'll see that we're getting drastically different dates for our last modified dates. Now, the problem that I have is that for each of these files, I uploaded them all at the same time. So I'm not actually getting, you know, something that is drastically different here, which would be nice. Um, but you can see that the time that they were inserted was quite a bit different, right? Now, the other thing that we can look at, and we've learned this in previous videos as well, is if I come down to the Get Metadata Activity, one of the things that I might want to look at here 
is the input. And so you'll notice on the first one, and this is a way to verify and validate that it's working correctly. This one says it is the file that is June 9th of 2015, June 9th of 2015. So this one is getting the information, the last modified date of that file. So it's getting passed in. We see that it's not placeholder. So that's a good sign. And that's June 9th of 2015. Now I would want to validate that with one of these other ones to verify that it's changing. So if I click way up here and I look at the input, you'll notice right here that it is not June 9th. This is June 6th. So that's a little bit of kind of ease your mind a little bit and verify that it is looking at a different file, that each iteration of the loop, it is changing the value of that data set. So we have June 9th, we have June 6th. If I go and click on another one here, look at the input, what's being passed in, we have June 7th. So this looks good. Of course, we know we can look at the output, right? That's one of the first things that we learned. And the last modified is right there. All right, 23.5. Five, six. Not quite sure how that lines up with this 2356. Perfect. So it would have been a little bit nicer if we had files that I didn't upload all at the same time or if I went in and made a modification to a couple of them so we could see some variance there. But the truth is, if you look at the input and the output, it gives you exactly what you want, which is verification that it's working the way that we want it to. I hope this video was helpful for you. I know that when I first started, these are the things I struggled with really figuring out how to make this dynamic. But this is an awesome example of how to leverage parameters in dynamic data sets so that you don't have to create different data sets for everything that you do. You can have one or two data sets that are very reusable. And then it allows you to do stuff like this, where you can pass in values even in the middle of a for each loop and look at different files. I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one.